episode 472 Come of the on. Working Class Bowhunter podcast. Mark Jury, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. Can you believe 472 episodes? No. <laughs> Feels like it's like number three or four, which is probably where I, my number is. I don't know how many times I've been on, maybe a half dozen or You've so. You've been on quite a bit, man. Yeah, probably 10. I would say you're probably the most requested guest every time I do like a poll or something like that. I told mom to slow that down. <laughs> She's got to quit quit writing in. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. People like you, man, which is good. Well, we like I, I like being here. That's I good. do. I enjoy it. I, I love your format and just uh, love you guys. So appreciate you having me on. Well, we love you guys back. So you guys are good people and uh, we're fun. Absolutely. That's I think that's why I like it. It is fun. It's loose. <laughs> self It's loose. Yeah. No, that's I mean, that's the whole goal, right? Just have a good time. Talk to your hunting. And it reminds me of the way I grew up. And still to this day, Terry and I get together, have a couple cold beers or cocktails, and yeah. we just shoot the breeze about deer hunting. And, yeah. and that's that's what I think that's why your podcast resonates so so much across American you know hunters yeah. because you you're like sitting there in a living room or at a bar and shooting the breeze, and that's yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Don't ever lose that. And so I think we switch it up. You know, so one episode might be just like we have to stick to only hardcore deer hunting tips tactics topics whatever but then a lot of episodes we kind of we'll talk about something oh side note bring something up and then go back to it which you know so it's relaxed i guess that way is the goal um but man we're getting real close to deer season here um as far as like some of the southern well i would say northern and southern states are already kicking off season um you know october 1st here for illinois and iowa residents um, we're moving in and this episode is going to be all about deer cast. So we're going to dive into basically what it is for people who don't know. And then I want to break down what's inside of deer cast, because I think a lot of people might see it as just another app or a gadget or a gimmick or whatever. And, and it's not. And I think that's the goal of this one is to show that it's not and talk about what it actually is. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. We, it's been out now for, four or five seasons mm -hmm. and uh it's been met with incredible response across the country with mm -hmm. a lot of people that eat sleep and breathe it and use yeah. it on a daily basis and and mm -hmm. really see the the benefits that it it can bring you and it's something that we did and we didn't take lightly when we built it mm -hmm. in fact we tested it for a long time before we ever released it to the public yeah yeah and uh we're just so confident in what what it can do and i'm just so excited to talk about it i always am mm -hmm. because it, it really is the basis of why we all go out there. Mm -hmm. We want to see more deer more often. Yeah. And everybody's time's precious and valuable and limited these days. Yeah. So I think DeerCast is one of those tools that can really help optimize your time of field. Yeah, whether you're, whether you're taking a guest or whether you're taking time off work or mm -hmm. you want to go out and have a good experience. And, and uh, that experience sometimes rests with did the deer move or not you know, yeah, you know it's always a good time to be hunting whether you see one or not but it's a better time when they move really well so for sure so if someone had lived under a rock for the last i don't know however many seasons and didn't listen to any podcasts or see anything on youtube what is deer cast if some if you were just if i didn't had no idea what would you tell me what deer cast was just to start man i appreciate that question because even whether they're familiar with it or not we talked about this internally like that first year, we had all of our talking points that we were really trying to go through very thoroughly, and we've kind of gotten away from that a little bit. So I appreciate that question straight yeah. out of the gate because deer cast is is so different than anything else out there, and mm -hmm. I don't think there was anything like it when we dropped it. And now now you're starting to see, you know, yeah. well, other course, models right. Anytime come out. You do something cool, yeah. So <laughs> it's a it's an algorithm that is a uh, it it interprets the weather in your area on an hour by hour basis and runs it through an algorithm that is assessing 13 different weather variables across the 13 different phases of the deer season. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with Drew Outdoors, you know, we do a show 13 Yep. and you know, we start phase one there, September the 15th and then phase 13 ends January the 15th. So mm -hmm. I always like to look at the bookends the front part of the season and the last part of the season mm -hmm. so that people understand, you know what, they're doing something drastically different in September than they are in January right. and they react differently in September than they do January. Okay. Yeah. Well, part of the reason that they're doing different things and acting differently is the weather 
is drastically different from September to January. So that gives that stark contrast of, yeah. you know what, you're right. This they, isn't smoke and mirrors. It's and not smoke and mirrors. It's not deer do the same thing every day for, you know, four straight months. Right. Yeah. You know, and I suspect if we broke it down even further, they they change even more drastically than deep winter versus the spring. Months and, yeah, and, yeah. And they're conti- they're constantly changing. That's how they survive. And I, I would assume most animals are that way. We just yeah. don't study the rest of them. Yeah, but you, you don't have rabbit cast. No, we don't. It would probably be the same in, in some way. Yeah, but of course they analogy, but you know what I mean. So they do different things at different times of the year to survive. They're trying to live. Exactly. We're trying to kill them. So, right, right, right. So we're trying to break down part of their defense mechanisms by understanding how the weather affects that animal – Mm-hmm. at different phases throughout the year because what they're doing in September is different than November, than October, than December, than January. They yeah. change rapidly. Right. That's why we did the show 13. Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of opened up a, a lot of different um, you know, methods that people really weren't analyzing. It's just how Terry and I had been doing it. You know, we, we're very analytical, so we always break things down and try to understand why. Yeah, yeah. Not that it happened, but why did that happen? Mm-hmm. You know, why did I see a deer... Every day between 11 and 2, November the 15th through the 18th, when I couldn't get him to daylight, September the 25th or December the 25th, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so they just change a lot, and and weather affects those changes. So we go in and we we analyze the wind, the wind speed, the temperature, Mm -hmm. the temperature change, the variable temperature from as it departs from the average high, barometric pressure the change in barometric pressure uh there's there's 13 different variables that all break down on an hour by hour basis in the algorithm Mm -hmm. that's kind of telling you whether it's going to be a great day good day okay day uh poor day or bad day Mm -hmm. and of course Mm -hmm. there's no such thing as a bad day of hunting right right yeah but there are days where you're out there and they don't move as well as they did three days prior less desirable days to spend your time out there when Especially Correct. if you got to work or something like that. Correct. So we developed this algorithm to predict it and then tested it. And uh, now that we've had it and had the ability to look at it in hindsight, mm-hmm. we've got it tweaked out. And I mean, it is it is so incredibly useful and helpful and, and accurate. Mm-hmm. We're just so proud of, of what it's able to do on a day in and day out basis. I, yeah. I forgot to mention moon as well as one of those weather variables. Precip, yeah. you know, precip rate, you mm-hmm. know, because those, those things change. You think, well. You're right. I'll take one variable, okay? Precipitation. There is a huge difference between light rain, which is considered precipitation, yep. and a deluge heavy rain. Like the deer are going to react differently to those two events. Yeah, yeah. And that's just one of the 13 things that the algorithm looks at every hour. Right, right. Moon phase. You know, is there a difference in how they move in and around the full moon versus the dark of the moon? Mm-hmm. I would I would argue till the day I die, it's a huge difference. Yes, they still move, yeah. but it, it is subtle little differences about how much they'll move during daylight, during in and around the full moon versus in and around the dark of the moon. See, I, I like that you brought those, like, uh, you know, rain, the moon, and then like barometric pressure, like you brought those up, because it seems like some people like to debate that that is smoke and mirrors a little bit. It, it seems like it. You know I'm, what I mean? Like, it, yes. You know, we've had some people push back on it this year out of, out of the blue. I, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've had some some um, negative stuff being said about it, which it, it hit us a little bit out of left field because I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the group. I mean, I know who, who said it, but I don't know those guys, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, they kind of called it a gadget. And I was like, gadget, you know, it just didn't make sense to me. But mm-hmm. it's not a gadget. I mean, it's it's real. And it's... it's they uh, didn't make this up. No, we didn't make it up. We've been watching them for 30 years. And trail photos really is when it really opened our eyes as to the differences between why did I see 30 deer last night and none tonight? Mm-hmm. Like, what happened? What occurred? Something happened. Something happened. <laughs> Something so, occurred. You're right. You know, I'm sitting in the same stand, same wind. And last night they all moved. Tonight they none did. So mm-hmm. those are, are drastic mm-hmm. differences. An- another one that I like to often say and, and draw your attention to Watch what clouds do to their movement in the early season versus what they do to them in December. Mm-hmm. It is two. It's directly opposite. In December, it's going to slow them down. It's going to make them move later because they're looking for thermal, mm-hmm. right? They mm-hmm. want the sunshine. in In the early season, clouds are 
something that influences movement. It enhances it as opposed to slowing it down. Yeah. So that's why I say there's such a big change from early season to late season. That's why I often draw on that as a comparison. Right. Because it, it opens your eyes and goes, you know what? That You're right. It's different. Right, right. Well, there's a subtle change in a curve from September through December or January. And the algorithm helps guide you through that. Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, can it help you decide what access you're taking or can it do that? Can it... Can it, it interpret if coyotes came in and cleared the bed or some of those right. things that it can't control? No, yeah. but it can give you a general idea of better days to hunt than others. And that's a that's a valuable tool that we none had when we were growing up, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I was young, I would have killed for something like this, you know, just to, to learn from in general or to play with, you know, even, you know, I didn't hunt nearly as much as I do now. Like when I was a kid, I couldn't. Um, but if I had something like this to just play with on my phone. You know what I mean? And I was watching your guys' videos and some of the real tree videos and stuff over and over. That was my deer cast back then. Sure. That's what I had. Um, so yeah, I can't imagine like the knowledge that new hunters are going to have with a tool like this, you know, growing up with it. I mean, I can't imagine what they're going to have when they're in, in 20 years, like how calculated something like this could be. Um, but how fun for them, you know? So I guess the comparison is like catching the weather at 10 o'clock every night back in the, <laughs> right. in, in the 80s yeah. versus at the flip of a button opening a, the weather.com or accuweather up and going right. oh i know what it's going to do tomorrow or the next hour or whatever yeah yeah so you, you know what that I had? type of it's that type of paradigm shift yeah for sure what we had in camp when i was younger and this it seems kind of silly because we could have just probably pulled it up i don't know i guess then we could have pulled it up on our phones but my buddy that we always hunted with had one of those noah weather radios right every morning before we went out he just had the sounds like a world war ii radio just giving you your weather right and it's from from like the nearest airport it's really not like it's probably wasn't nearly as honed in as we should have been paying attention to you know we could have went out and looked at the weather vane but we just like i don't know why listening to the noah weather radio thing so anytime i ever i hear that now it brings me back to to that moment like 10 year old kurt and Kim. yeah I don't know why. And you just sit there and listen to the same report over and over and over. It just repeats over. itself. <laughs> but you'd listen to it for hours. Yeah, you listen to it like 15 times in a row, and you'd be like, all right, it's time to go out. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> Winds out of the east, and that's like... Yes, <laughs> exactly. Terry and I used to watch the Weather Channel, mm-hmm. and it was on nonstop. Same yeah. thing. We'd never turn it, you know? Yeah. It was, it's all we ever watched, but... Yeah. It's, uh, I can't be the only one that like Noah or the Weather Channel like brings them back to when they were a kid in hunting camp. I don't know. Guarantee why. you, you're, you're a lot of people right now are smiling. <laughs> Thank God for that. I tried to even find a Noah Weather Radio app just to listen to it to give get it back <laughs> or put you to sleep. <laughs> or put me to sleep. Yeah, I was doing it one time. My buddy was a non-hunter. He was over, and it was like during October, and I had I had one of the crank ones. And, you know, I had to crank it up just to listen to a few minutes of Noah Weather Radio. He's like, enough with the World War II radio. Will you shut that off? I'm like, you just don't understand. So I shut it off and went on my way. But I yeah, don't know. Side pretty- note. Sorry, that brought me back to my childhood, you know, talking about that a little bit. Isn't but- it cool? Those fond memories you have, mm-hmm. you know, like little things will trigger a fond memory. And then like a just- smell can do that. Absolutely. It's you pretty know, cool. My buddy Trevor always says uh, diesel fumes bring him back to when he was a kid for hunting season. Like. Just that smell brings him back to being like hunting with his grandpa. Absolutely. So I'm like smoke, bacon frying, mm-hmm. you know, stuff that you remember so fondly from when you were a kid because it was one of the first times it happened, you know. Yeah. Like the same way with, with wine, homemade wine. When I smell it, I think of deer season because my mom, my grandpa Ritter made homemade wine for 60 straight years. And she would send us a field with homemade wine to keep us warm. <laughs> no kidding. Swear to you. That's which was a- the opposite. I would drink it and freeze my ba- butt off, you know, because it thins your blood or whatever. But she used to say, here, this will keep you warm. It's not so, whiskey. <laughs> no, it's ho- homemade wine. And, oh, you know, funny. anytime I smell it, I think of those early days deer hunting. I don't know if I've ever had homemade wine. Oh, man. I'm ashamed to admit it's that. It's the worst bit. hangover in the world. Oh, I can brother. imagine. It is the worst. I'll have to. Uh, it so will smoke. Now yeah. people are going to send us homemade wine. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a bunch <laughs> I'll of I'll keep a jug at the green room for you next time you come out. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> this was Grandpa Ritter's. William T. Ritter, man. I'd, I'd go over there every day after school, my high school year. I quit I quit football my senior year. Yeah. And I went and spent it with, with my grandfather. To drink wine with him? Yeah, a lot of days. I'd just hang out and, and be with Bill Ritter. He was an amazing person. One of my favorite all-time people ever in my my life. I that's loved awesome. Him. Loved him dearly. That's awesome. Like those cool, that's just kind of neat, you know, a little side story of like what brings you back a brings little bit. Brings you back, but, yeah. But what's funny is like now the younger generation and kids that are using DeerCast now, this is that's going to be their thing, you know, when they're 30 is. or 40, you know. And that might, I remember the, remember the first version of DeerCast, which... 
brings us to our next segue, the 2.0. 2.0, it's out right now. It's out. You can get it right now. You can get it right now, and it's loaded. And we, we made a big change this fall. We used to have our our deer cast nows mm-hmm. as part of our, our pay tier. They were behind the paywall. Now they're part of the free version. So every single kill all fall, the quick cuts that we do in the deer cast nows yeah. are going to be out. And, of course, we just started Deer Season 21, and we're mm-hmm. doing Dream Season Live, our full, fully edited semi-live stuff. It's all going to be in deer cast as well. Like the content is, is, is greater than than it's ever been before. Mm-hmm. And of course, we're also doing working working class on DeerCast. Yeah. That's new for us this year. Yeah. So that's actually I don't know how I didn't say that first, Mark. That's the first time we've like announced it, announced it on the podcast. Here it is. You know, I've said it on another podcast I was a guest on has like kind of dropped it there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how like when I started this deer casting, I didn't be like, hey, by the way, we have a new series. But I, I got important things to get to first. I, guess. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> but it's cool. Like we're building this app into not just a predictor and not just a, a an app that'll help you through tracking problems, yeah. but a, an overall media app to yeah. where if you're connected to the outdoors in your soul, if you love it like mm-hmm. you and I love it, then DeerCast is the spot for you. I mean, yeah. there's so much media in there from people that love it, eat, sleep, and breathe it, and they're real hunters, and yeah. they really care about the sport and conservation in our yep. future. That's that's who we want in DeerCast, and uh, we're I've been embracing saying those people. It's a community of the real ones. It is, man. In the industry, especially nowadays. You know, it's like, what I like about with DeerCast, if you spend your time there and you become a part of the community, and you do that by just being involved in DeerCast, liking and commenting. Big and time. Interacting with people there. And, um, you know, I'm working on becoming a, a bigger part of that community by commenting and interacting with people and stuff like that. Uh, but I, what I like about it the most, and this goes on, you know, my involvement in the industry is like getting deeper and deeper as we grow, but it's also so new to me. And some of the stuff I learn as I get into the industry kind of turns me off about like, Oh, this is happening in the industry. They're bought by so-and-so this is anti-gun low key being funded this way or whatever. You don't have to worry about that with deer cast. It's a group of the real ones and it's staying that way. Well, most of them been around as long as Terry and I have, <laughs> right, you know, right. and um, it, it, we just, we just love the people in our, in our space. Yeah. And some of these people are our dear friends, yourself included. And you, you kind of, you kind of, uh, as you go through life, you understand who's authentic and who isn't. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think you, and you, you surround yourself with those authentic ones and you, you grab a hold of them, you hug them, you love them and you tell yeah. them you love them and you show them you love them. Yep. And that's what life's all about. Mm-hmm. And and that's the way we feel about the group we're assembling within, yeah. within deer cast. They're Definitely. all, they are all dyed in the wool, deer hunters, killers, and most importantly, conservationists. Yep. They care so deeply about leaving it better than you found it. And I, sure. I think that's important. Agree. Yeah, it's it's a good thing to be a part of. But yeah, we're we're excited to have working class on Deercast. That series is going to be a lot of fun. So, well, if you wanted if you wanted to hear the best podcaster in our industry, now you can you can catch him right there on Deercast or wherever else you you listen to Kurt. I'm fun. If you want to <laughs> listen to and learn from the best biologist that has ever walked this earth. Grant Woods. Mm. I mean, how do you how do you top Dr. Grant? You cannot. No. He's forgot more than most people ever. Yeah, ever learn about mm-hmm. the deer? And, Guys like and, that blow my mind. And, oh my God, he's so sharp. I mean, we've learned so much from Dr. Grant through the years. If you want to learn from the best shooter that's ever walked the earth, who better than Levi Morgan? I hard, mean, hard to argue with the numbers. You know, numbers and just the people. I mean, it's it's incredible. If you yeah. if you want to see the most beautiful epic footage ever produced in the outdoors, who better than Driven with Pat and Nicole? Mm-hmm. I mean, these are the type of people that are going to be contributing to deer cast and. Yeah. We're just so tickled to death to have them all in there. Fun, with fun us. circle of media, community, and just good people. Great people, and and just like I said, unbelievable outdoors men and women. I'm excited to tap into some of that as far as like the you know I'm selfish on the podcast side. Sure, like I get, get to podcast with these people. Get them. That's fun. You know, that's they're there to to conversate with and make new friends and kind of just expand our. Have friendship. you had Levi on yet? Never. Oh man, you're gonna love my, my buddy Clint Casper's good buddies with them. Yeah. Um. So I think we've talked, he's talked to him about it and he said he'd do it and we just haven't, haven't crossed paths. And Grant, I mean, I haven't had him. I'd love to have him on. Ooh, he's a big get. I mean, he's so smart. I talked with, um, uh, Pat 
at uh well it's been at the iowa classic when right. we were hanging out yeah and we were kind of just bullshitting a little bit he's like yeah i'd love to do it just and so i i uh message him just a little bit here and there but i know it's like now season starts and that he'd still, push back. he'd still do it i guarantee you he's such a good guy he can't be that far away no i wouldn't think they're very far at all but um but no so i guess going back into like so that explains what DeerCast is how the algorithm works like some of what you can get out of it but it's also just like a, a community you can watch your guys's entire library there which is awesome yep full um, libraries there all of deer season 21 is there can, can you break down like um like uh subscription or membership breakdown on what that is because i know you're saying there's like a paywall if someone there is curious. a paywall there's a, a ten dollar version that you get like five days and then the twenty dollar version where you get ten Ten days of deer cast and mm-hmm. then you get the deer cast track mm-hmm. additionally for that as well so for a year for a year it's an annual subscription right yeah pretty cheap <laughs> it's i mean it's yeah 20 bucks you know that's like two beers anymore right so i ain't kidding there in- inflation hasn't taken us up yet <laughs> so. if, if you drink at the iowa deer classic it's uh less than two beers so it's a beer and a half <laughs> it's a beer and a half unless you're at the working class booth <laughs> well we we tend to take care of our listeners um so yeah the what do we got going on over here? Taylor's texting. I think she wants to butt into our podcast. Oh, man. Okay. Well, is she on the... Uh, let's see if she's on the old Zoom machine here. Finally, you're getting her on. Maybe. Let's see if she's on. Um, yeah, she said she's ready. I told her to jump on the Zoom. Oh, maybe I didn't have... It says waiting. All right, hold on. Oh, yep, there she is. Admit. Let's see if she's in here. Hold on. Recording in progress. There we go, recording. Taylor, can you hear us? I don't hear your audio. Can you hear me? There you are. There you are. Yeah, I can hear you guys great. What's up? How are you? Can you see me? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> do we look like oh, we're... Oh, you know? What? Do we look like we're like looking off into space or something, or is it... Yeah, I was like, I wonder if they're just looking at a blank screen or if it's me. <laughs> no, actually, we're looking at a camera, but you are right behind the camera. They have it set up really nice here. This is a, oh, cool. This is a really cool studio. We, I was hoping it wasn't going to seem like we were just thousand yards staring when we're talking to a guest on Zoom, so hopefully it doesn't feel yeah. that way. Um, no, it looks good. Okay, we're working out guys, the bugs. Are you guys loving the new studio? I've seen some pictures like of you guys, and I know Greg <laughs> and Casey, I think, went there. Yep. Yeah, we're loving it. It's pretty cool. It's it's nice to have our own space to kind of just do whatever we want, you know? Where Dad can go and hang out for eight I, hours. I can just long. get away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. The, the well, drive was quick, too. It was only three hours over here, so it was awesome. I wondered when you said when you uh, that you were going to Illinois how far it was. Three, That's not bad. Two fifty five yeah. actually. It wasn't bad at all. Straight hmm. straight east. Might have to zip down there during deer season. You never know. Yeah. Easy. You and Austin come on down. We got a bedroom, everything's set up. We have a bar here. They have a bar yeah. inside the studio. <laughs> Well, it looks like I might have to come there. <laughs> you know, it's sad when we built the place and we were like working on everything. The bar, for some reason, was the first thing that got done before the studio. <laughs> and so people were coming in. They're like, hey, how come you guys are, you know, you're a podcast. That's why you have this place. But the bar is done yeah. first. I'm like, well, we had to have a place to drink while we built the <laughs> studio to keep our well, sanity. So it worked out good. <laughs> good I'm stuff. not shocked one bit. Bar top priority yep. podcast room under that well it's not it's a bar but when we want to sound more professional we call it the green room because that's where people mm. are way outside the studio so it worked out yep. yeah so, i like it taylor today we're talking about he wanted to do a deep dive into deer cast and taylor's okay. probably one of the best examples of someone who follows it to the nth degree because mm-hmm. she's gotten to the point where she won't even even think about going anymore unless it's good or great like if it says any even okay she won't go okay to you know to poor or bad she she looks and you can just tell her mood (laughs) changes on those good and greats i I can promise you that i love it yeah it it kind of i can almost sometimes use it against dad because i'm like nope not going today it says bad but i mean that's a true testament to how accurate it is you know it's like it 
when that when it says good or great you're just pumped up even more you're yeah. anxious to get out there when you're going out and it's a bad day you're like well this is going to be a slow three hours but here we go she, well right. when's the last time you hunted a bat though you just you, she literally won't do uh, it but she'll yeah, always no. be like i think i'm going to sit out i got some work to do today but you go ahead and i'll come back and she'll be like what'd you see uh a fawn <laughs> <laughs> yeah yep the, it, it, the bad days are definitely the work days to catch up and yeah. then Obviously, when you see those green letters, you're like, okay, it's time to put the computer aside and go out. And get moving, yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier. So for guys that work a lot of hours, that's the perfect tool or or have limited vacation time or just limited days off in general. You know, that, you know what? I don't know that maybe that gets overlooked for me. It doesn't. Cause that's the first thing I think about is how little of time I have to go. Um, but for guys that are in that situation, guys and girls that are in that situation, that's perfect. You know, Heck they can, yeah. they I mean, can pick their day. The, the convenience of it, you know, like you said, it's like people are, their daily lives are busy and it's like before deer cast, you know, you, you always hear people where it's like, okay, I have to pick my vacation or I have to pick it on these dates. And I think deer cast even helps people learn for in the future, what weeks to take off, you know, looking yeah. back to seeing what it is on the app, but Definitely. yeah, I mean, live, we live by it. Yes. It's our own app, but I mean, it's like we wake up in the morning, look at it right before the hunt, look at it. Right. So well, it'd be weird, right? If, if you guys didn't actually use your own product, like you believe in it <laughs> yeah. that much, you guys have all this time and money and just effort and, you know, a ton of people's effort and time and money even put into it, you know, and it'd be weird if you were just like, yeah, I haven't looked at it. You know what I mean? It's if you guys yeah. are using it and actually familiar with it and can attest to um, how accurate it is. I mean, that's the best thing mm -hmm. to kind of show people, you know, it is what it is and is what you guys, you know, put in your effort into. So in fact, it's, it's made me sloppy. I mean, if you can ask Taylor pre deer cast days, how long would I sit there and analyze the weather and write my notes and go, I think the day that's coming up is going to be Thursday and Friday. And, and then it's not going to move these other days, you know, and I'd sit there for hours doing that yes. hours, hours. hours. Yeah. And, and, but that was really the process of creating the algorithm. I didn't realize I was doing right. that, but that's what I was doing. Now that I've got deer cast, I have confidence in the algorithm and I forgot some of the stuff I used to right. look at on a daily basis, yeah. you know? So you, it's made me have, a little... Do you, did you like keep those notes when you would do that? Uh, yeah, we certainly have them between Terry and I. We have them. No kidding. Yeah, it's we like have the, the green original. notebook on the water boy. Yeah, exactly. The playbook. <laughs> exactly. And just the, the pie charts and the, the levers and the, the settings. And yeah. like if you if someone saw what was under that thing, it is incredibly complicated. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it's cool that like how you said the 13 factors that kind of calculate in to like weather factors, you know, like I, I, I like that moon phase and barometric pressure talk because there's there's that debate. It seems like a lot more with the moon phase. Um, we get a lot of questions like emailed in. You do an episode on moon phases, you know, like, do, do you guys pay attention to moon phases? Do you guys not pay attention to you moon can, phases? You can break down moon in like five minutes though, but it's only one thirteenth of the overall equation mm -hmm. and the overall power that the moon has changes from phase to phase to phase. So that's right. part of the, the cool part about the algorithm. Mm -hmm. The fact that moon doesn't have quite the influence on them each individual week of the, of the year, mm -hmm. like some of the other variables. So right. it's waiting within the chart varies based on phase what would you pick out to be like the number one thing that has the most effect on movement it changes per, by per, phase right okay so, so i couldn't sloppy pick, question on my part I, no not at all it's a, it's a it's an, a normal question most people are going to ask that yeah you really can't pick one because they change they change by the hour it's yeah. amazing if you that makes if sense. you sit there and, and scroll through the hourly like our pie chart is moving like the algorithm. I mean, that thing is unbelievable. If yeah. you see it working, yeah, we don't ever show it. Cause then at all of a sudden the secret. it's the, you know, Kentucky fried chicken <laughs> recipe. It's right, out. Right? right. So yeah. we don't ever show it, but, uh, Terry and I are the only two that really are privy to it. And Matt. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, for, that's smart on you guys. part. You can't give away <laughs> the, the heartbeat of the operation. On yeah. There. But, correct. But no, that's cool. It's people, like you said, are, I don't say sloppy, but probably take, T basically take advantage of it or not give it uh, what, what, am I, what am i looking for they don't really understand all the inner workings that go into it to make it what it is because it is so simplistic of an interface 
that uh, you, I guess you don't really have to think. They don't the see the back end. They just yeah. see the report. Well, yeah. they don't have to think about it. And that's yeah. the beauty of it. It is the bit, beauty of it. You know? Yeah. But it also makes it seem a little more simpler than it actually is. Like if you saw right. the engine, it's like, whoa, that thing's fine tuned. Right. Right. Exactly. So no, it's cool. And then, hey, Taylor, it's great to finally have you on again, you know? <laughs> Heck yeah. Hey, I was just waiting for the invite. Been... What episode was she? Like six or four? Or... No, like uh, <laughs> uh, under 20, within the first 20. This I think. is 472. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Well, I need to keep coming. We need to get Austin on here too. The two yeah, of no. us have some fun. But I was going to add one more thing onto the deer cast mm -hmm. subject. Is like, like dad says, it's so it's almost so simple of what you're seeing on a screen that you're not realizing how much goes into it. But I also think that like, like me, I, I'm learning still as a hunter mm -hmm. and it's, you learn a lot from it. Looking back, you might not, you might not realize it in the time, yeah. but all of a sudden things start clicking together, you know, after years of using it, after years of looking at the good and uh, great versus the bad and poor, all of a sudden you're like, huh, there's a common theme here. Like every good and great day, it's, you know, uh, this type pressure, it's this cloud cover, not cloud cover, or, mm -hmm. you know, and all of a sudden you're, you're learning as well. So yeah. it's like, yes, you're always going to go to the app, but at the same time, you know, if someone say a friend goes to you and is like, Hey, what day should I hunt or what type thing should I be looking for? Like all of a sudden you've learned it just from using the app. I think that's right. a big thing for me is like, now I could, I actually, realize why it says great and good based on just studying things within the app for sure she brings up a great point that we haven't hit on it no, it not. is a great teaching tool for that exact reason she just for sure out. and just we confidence in your decisions outside the app too you know big right. time mm -hmm. we we talked about deercast track as a teaching tool deercast mm -hmm. in general is a teaching tool especially if you go into our daily videos that we give you mm -hmm. phase by phase, like Terry and I break down the phase and break down the weather and every weather variable yeah. every single day. Like if you'll take the time to watch them all, it's an it's a it's a lot to try and comprehend. But if you yeah. do it enough, you're going to figure out exactly what's making them move during certain phases of the year. Right, right. I think it's great. I love that it's kind of having you guys in everybody's back pocket. To just like, it's almost, it's as good as having your phone number being like, hey man, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you know, really? Your cast track was supposed to help with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I said, every time, like, it's like every evening during the rut, you look over and dad's on about 17 track jobs on his phone. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Do you just have your phone on like, do not disturb during season? Mm, no, you can ask her. Like, I, I don't sleep much. <laughs> yeah, does not sleep. Like I would say two to three hours a night. He does During the season. I don't sleep. No kidding. Yeah. I can yeah, I don't imagine sleep much. That. That's why I'm always awake late at night when you're like, hey, could you jump on? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It's yeah. like the times you guys have jumped on has been like, hey, man, we're up recording and it's 1 a.m. Sure, I'll jump on. And we're all boozed up and you're just like, yeah, I'll jump on whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like I think that last time, well, the last time Taylor, the, actually, technically you were, well, you answered the phone. You weren't really on the podcast. When we, oh, uh, we were in uh, Nebraska, weren't we? I think we were, yeah, I think Turkey we were Camp, turkey County, Nebraska. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. So you weren't really on. You said hi. I think that's about it. But Mark saved the day on that one. We had question. We had questions on winds out of the east, birds gobble the least. That was the main question for that podcast. Big time. I can't believe I remember back that far, especially for how many bush lights I had. We're going to do a night. series this spring, though. You said we're bringing in the turkey killers. I'm down for that because I'll be honest. That'll be. It'll be a lot of me not talking because I'll be learning, really. Like, you won't I, believe some of the guys. I mean, I, I know some of the best turkey killing fools in this country. Yeah. I mean, they've been killing them like this for decades, and they're, they're just, they're really good at understanding the bird, and they'll be very helpful to your audience. Doug will be a good guy for that to have, to be like lead that because he's more into turkeys than all of us. But like that, I won't know how to tap into the turkey knowledge because I won't know how to get there. You know what I mean? I won't know what questions to ask to get. I want to, my goal is when I have someone that's super knowledgeable about something, how do you tap in to get it out of them? Right. You got to be smart enough to ask yeah. the questions, right? Not me for turkey, <laughs> <laughs> not the guy, <laughs> but I'll try my best. You know, I'll do some research. We'll, we'll come up with them. Taylor, who would be your first guest on that series when we get into the turkey killer tour? Mm, Paul the, Butsky. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Butsky's number one. Gotta okay. be. Yep. Gotta be. Butsky okay. is at the top. Yep. For sure. Okay. I'll start. 
We're going to start with Paul Butsky. I'll start organizing the hit list on who to get on. Oh, yeah. And then by the end of it, I'll just be like the turkey king. You will. <laughs> You're going to be the turkey king of podcasts. I yeah. mean, it'll be awesome. Cool. I'll chase them till 1 p.m. here in Illinois, and then I'll be done for the day. Yeah. That's all we get. Yeah, exactly. You know, it is crazy. Like, there's certain sayings throughout the year. I, I couldn't recite them right now, but certain sayings, like the one that you just mentioned, Kurt, yeah. that we've said on social media. And it's insane the amount of conversations st will start just because of those sayings that dad says or Buttsky or all of those guys. Like, it, it really, I think it fascinates people because turkeys, yeah. I think, are kind of confusing to understand, not to them, but it's yeah. like turkeys are kind of confusing. So when you do hear those certain sayings, you're like, huh. Mm -hmm. interesting that's where but i'm at with it yeah the response we always get on social is awesome i mean mm -hmm. people start talking and then you hear other sayings that they start or they've heard from their dad or grandpa or whoever right. I mean, it's kind of cool is there any sayings mark that like that that apply to whitetails really that kind of ring out to you at all mm, well it, it, um there's sayings that i say mm -hmm. you know you can ask taylor like green to green transfer I talk about it all the time. You mentioned that to me today in a conversation we had at lunch. He did it. That's what he's doing right now. Yeah. Wish um, we could break that down because that's something to know. Yeah. If you want to. First first south after a bunch of north. Um, sweet November. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. all those things, you know, that first south that are so synonymous with the Drury Outdoors series. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's those are the yeah. things that I say. Yeah, I, I say sweet November is how I refer to November, just from your guys' series growing up watching them. But it was it was funny. I was I was watching um uh, an I knew on, you were gonna bring this up. <laughs> I was watching an online show the other day and uh and the, the whole intro, well I'll just say it was Midwest Whitetails and a bunch of young guys and they were all talking about sweet November, sweet November, sweet November. And I texted the producer and I said, Do you realize the first time that was ever said was two thousand and I believe it was oh one. I was eleven. In one of our videos, but there was a there was a movie called Sweet November with Keanu Reeves. Uh -huh. And I thought the movie was so-so, but I thought the title was badass, right? Yeah. So I was like, I killed a deer on November 1st, and I was like, Sweet November, you know? And, yeah. and ever yeah. since then, we've used it repeatedly in the Drury Outdoors series. Hilarious. So it was nice to see the influence over there on the Midwest <clears throat> Whitetail side. Who They do a phenomenal job, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Their online series is just second to none when yeah. it comes to deer. They are so good. For sure. So look at you, in, influence in the young crowd. Sorry, Taylor. Speaking of like series, I literally just watched a couple hours ago. I watched uh, episode four, mm. Alberta. Oh my gosh. It's oh really my good. word. Yeah, it was it really good. Like I could go sit down and watch it again. It was, it was epic, awesome. wasn't it? Mm hmm. Just it was epic. an adventure. I mean, just yeah. an don't give it away because I haven't watched it yet. We'll watch it when we're done recording, but okay. it, it is yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, you got to watch. I mean, it's really, it's like 30 minutes and the whole time your eyes are just like, wow. It's Between the deer, Wade and Brandon did a really good job producing it. Amazing. And then also just the the edit and the music and everything to it is really good. It is really good. <laughs> awesome. I watched yeah. um, Austin's Mule Deer uh, yeah. the other night and that was awesome. That was. I know that. They're, they're all they've all turned out awesome it's just it's so fun to be able to watch these big deer going down already mm -hmm. you know? in real time but, essentially yeah, yeah basically it's like shoot brandon and just killed that you know and austin's i think was only like a few days after it happened so yeah have you guys picked out a like a sh shoulder mount or anything like that for the house what you guys are going to do for that i think he actually we can he's not on this so i can kind of call him a little brat right he right. wants to do a pedestal with his other big deer right oh my front. goodness he killed a 206 on public land a few years ago Uh huh. now this buck was his second biggest at 201 but i think he's gonna do them like side by side on this cool like um kind of uh rustic like barn wood that'll be mount. cool though yeah that'll be neat and both yeah. big velvet deer he's staring at me you see him Oh, oh, there's yeah. his 206. Yeah, right there. That's, yeah, that's cool. What a brat, right? Two, two, two hundies. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Beautiful mount, so that'll look awesome. I'm yeah, he's excited. So he's currently hunting elk. They're actually on a bull right now. This last update I got. No uh, kidding. They have Matthews and Danner in camp, and they're on a bull right now with somebody from Matthews. So awesome. No kidding. That's awesome. Hopefully they, hopefully they have success. And Taylor, sure. you're getting ready to go on your first elk hunt ever. I sound like the I sound like the host right now. Hey, I'm sorry, Kurt. I'm just kind, away, of, man. <laughs> just kind of jumping in and taking over. Just hang out. Give me a beer, Wade. Yeah, 
<laughs> Kurt needs to take a bathroom break. So anyway, Taylor, tell us about your first elk hunt ever. Actually, she starts here within a few days. No kidding. Yeah, a week from today. Yep, first elk hunt ever with a bow um, up at Wild Country, which is the same place that Oss killed his deer at and guides on. Awesome. Uh, but I'm and, excited. and where I'm you nervous. met? That's where you met. It is where we met, which is crazy. Like two days and two days, September fifteenth. We literally met six years ago no kidding but yeah we'll be almost hunting like to the exact date but i'm getting nervous now i went last week to hunt for fun loophole was up there so we went and hunted mm-hmm. and uh i mean i've been doing cardio and stuff trying to get my my lungs yeah ready and we go out there and i was like yep this is gonna completely kick my butt <laughs> yeah oh yeah definitely well you'll be fine you'll get through it he can austin can carry a that's what he's there oh, for. Oh, no. He'll be turning around going, come on. <laughs> yeah, me and Wade are going to be like, oh, come on. Flatlanders are struggling. Did you here. notice Wade breathing heavily in some of those scenes? In yes. <laughs> Alberta. I did, and I was like, that is not nearly as steep as the stuff that we're going to be Nor in. is it as high. I mean, that elevation no. isn't that high where they're at, so it's going to be Elevation interesting. kills me. I was just oh, in Wyoming, and it it drained me. Like It, it was frustrating because my legs feel good, but there's no but, gas. Yeah. And yeah, it's a weird. By the way, congrats on your deer. That thank was an you. Awesome deer. Thank you. Altitude is such a weird thing. That's kind of how I felt last week. It's like your legs are fine, you don't feel tired, but you're literally gasping for any type of oxygen that yeah. you can get. It's it's, it's frustrating because when yeah. I'm I was with guys that are more acclimated to the elevation, so I'm like I think it kind of hurt me because I'm trying to keep up, and I feel yeah. good. Like I felt strong enough. But yeah. you just, I was getting to the point where I'm like about to black out, you know, and like just feeling like I got nothing, nothing to breathe. You know, my brain's like starved yeah. for oxygen. And, and your then, ego yeah. was saying, please don't do this. To me. Oh, like yeah, I'm sitting there, I'm like, come over. on. Yeah. But we made it out okay. I just, you uh, always, like, you never want to be the person that's breathing, breathing the loudest <laughs> in a group while hiking. So then you try and hold it in and then you really can't breathe. Yep. And you're like, well, this is a lost cause. <laughs> I always try to be the last guy in the pack and then low key yep. look at everybody else, how they're breathing. Then it'd be like, <laughs> yeah, it was rough. Huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm Ooh. a wussy when it comes to elevation, but I imagine the more, I don't know. Here, here's, I have two outlooks on Western hunting. I have this bucket list of things I want to get done. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do all this. Like I got my archery muley, you know, want to kill another one, want to kill an elk. And then after that, I might just be like, yeah, I think I'm just going to focus on big whitetails or my kids now. You know, I've done my bucket yeah. list hunts. Why, why do you think Terry and I settled into that lane 25 <laughs> years ago? <laughs> we used to elk yeah. cut and do all that Western stuff. Now we're poop, right here. I, I get it. Yeah. So many people ask, or a lot of people even said like, hey, is your dad coming out with you or whatever? Dad's like, I don't like where elk live, but thank you for the advice. <laughs> it was exactly what I told you yeah. the other day. I said, I don't like where they live. I mean, I love I where it. they live. I don't like yeah. also being where they live. And right. I mean, I've, I've killed some yeah. elk, had great times doing it, but I was a younger man then. You right, know? right. And, uh, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to Taylor at age 26 going out there and killing a big bull. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully you I'm get sorry. an opportunity and then hopefully you can make that shot. So what have you been doing preparation wise to make sure that you've got enough oomph to get into that yeah. elk and make an ethical shot. Mm-hmm. So I've been, <laughs> dad's back to asking me the question. I love um, it. Hey, I'm, this is great. <laughs> We're co-hosts. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, yeah. I'm, Cause I ended the season last season, I think at about what? 40, 44, 45, if I'm not mistaken. 45. And then I think we added a little bit when yep. we were in Texas. Yep. So maybe 46, 40, yeah. Low. And so it was like, okay, with this elk hunt coming up, I knew I wanted to get, and really it's been such a goal of mine to like be over that 50 mark. I've just never, never gotten there. Mm -hmm. And so I started working out, no, not nothing crazy. Um, but really just trying to do a lot of reps, like with my arms, with low weight. Mm -hmm. And I took my bow. So let's just call it 46. And right now we have it at about 53 and a half. So I finally like hit that benchmark. And I will say too, with that, I'm shooting the Matthews Prima. It -hmm. just has an unbelievable smooth draw, which has helped me as well. Like you don't, I finally feel like I don't have this wall to get past, which Mm -hmm. is what I always like in the past. It was like, could I add more pounds? Maybe, but in the moment, can I get past that wall? That Prima is a smooth draw all the way back. So yeah, we got her to 53 and a half. And, uh, so I really do think like the, the workouts helped, 
Mm-hmm. But um, just it, it, it's it's got to feel better, I think. Like more confidence going out there shooting at a eight hundred some pound for animal, sure. Knowing that you have more oomph than that 46, 47 pounds, you know. Yeah, so, for sure. We also took her up to a victory four hundred as opposed to the five hundred. Your arrow as well. Yeah, yep. Yep. definitely. Yeah, knowing yep. that, like confidence in your equipment, confidence mm-hmm. in how you feel just in general about it all makes a big, big difference. I think, you know, um, it it does, but for like Taylor and for us, like her whole life, she's always been on that edge of, do I have enough to get through or not? I I think probably a lot of young hunters or perhaps women hunters, like we, we take it for granted. You want to shoot a 2.3 rage, go shoot it. You got it. You got enough juice to get through. Well, with her, we're always like, okay, you're going to shoot the inch and a half or can we get you up to the two inch, you know? Yeah. We were always making little tweaks and like changing over to victory was a huge deal for us blake uh blake shelby told me about him what you've yes. been shooting probably seven years now six years that micro diameter shaft you yeah. get like 20 percent greater penetration mm-hmm. and uh it's amazing what it combined with a cut on contact rage two inch or rage uh ss has allowed yeah. her to do at lower poundages well right. now we're going up from whitetail up to elk so she took the weight up we took the arrow weight up as well she took her poundage up we took the arrow weight up she's still going to shoot a two inch cut on contact rage and Mm -hmm. i think she's going to do great she got to compare notes with tiffany she was telling her what weights she's been shooting yeah what better person to talk to yeah because she's killed a bunch of elk at low 50s essentially yeah yeah low 50s uh i just was with her a couple weeks ago and she's currently only shooting i think she said 54 um and she's like i shot a lot of bulls between that 50 and 52 range at first yeah um so, but it just, it's, it speaks to the technology and the gear nowadays, you know, yeah, definitely. Like I was shooting 45, 46 pounds forever and passing through giant deer with those victory arrows. So yeah. it definitely speaks on the bow and the arrow and, and the broadhead for sure. But definitely. definitely a common question that we get, you know, with females just because, I mean, yes, there are females, Sarah Bomars of the world. They're out there shooting 60 pounds. My little chicken arms are struggling yeah. to get 50. So it's nice to compare notes, you know, with other females that kind of have the same, I guess, like worries about penetration and definitely because like my wife's about your size, Taylor, and we struggled. Like, I think she was shooting 40 pounds and we got her, yep. I think just touch over 40 pounds. Actually, she might still just be at 40 even. And, mm-hmm. uh, she might she's been out hunting had opportunity and then it was all almost like the first time we separated i was like hey you go hunt over here i'll hunt over here you know keep in touch with me let me know what's going on and then we met up and i was like all right well how'd it go went good i saw a couple does and i wanted her to shoot a doe just to get her first one you know break the ice you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. Yeah. and we're checking the trail camera and she's kind of like acting weird i'm like what's going on what's up I was like you could have shot a deer and you didn't shoot it huh she's like I think I just like archery more than I like shooting at animals. I'll just let you get the meat and I'll just shoot archery. And I'm like, hey, that's okay. I was like, hey, I respect that. And she did go a couple more times and there was a, another doe she could have shot. She's like, that's a yearling. And I was like, no, it's not. Just shoot it. You got to get your first. And she wasn't happy. Put a it. bucket in front of her. She's going to let him have it. I'll guarantee. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think so. But she's just like, I think I'm just fine shooting archery and having fun with that. And hey, whatever. I respect that. Good for her. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of funny. But. Fun still a fun yeah. hobby to get friends or family and go shoot we love shooting definitely with friends out here in utah yeah yeah but yeah i am getting nervous i will it was a pretty cool last week like i've never really been it was a rifle hunt with loopholds um i've never really been in bugling bulls like that mm-hmm. so i am kind of nervous to how my heart is going to react when we're <laughs> actually within i mean get we're on a ridge where you're basically 150 out i would say from all these bulls but i mean it literally sounded like a dinosaur park yeah like me i mean it was just jurassic insane. park out there like, yeah austin's like they're not even to the point that they will be on your hunt and i'm like Ooh, i'm gonna have to really calm her down just i remember <laughs> what that was like every time when i come in i couldn't even get my bow drawn back i can't there. imagine i'm going it's, next september it's crazy what now. bull elk do to you i mean they scare you to death i they actually excite you to death the the one yeah. time i had a big bull like probably within 60 yards was on a hunt with loophole in Oregon a couple of years ago. We were hunting mule deer, but an elk cut through uh, probably like a probably close to 300 class bull cut in between where the deer were at. We were watching and bugled at like 60 yards. That seems like in your face, you know, and I'm I like know. looking at it like, oh, my gosh, I can't even imagine. So I am going next September in Wyoming on I've been on one DIY um, 
elk yeah. hunt over the counter in Colorado, kind of just to say I did it, you know. Um, but now I'm going with uh, my buddy Trey Heiner. His son passed away with my dad passed away. We're doing a memorial hunt for both of them. Oh, and very nice. We're going to go out and try and wax a big bull. That's, so, that is really cool. But I'm nervous already. Like, I know the feeling of, okay, next week you're going to have a bull screaming in your face. Yeah. Like, I think what I would do is just, like, find my zen mode and visualize that and just be yeah. mentally prepared for it as much as you can. I don't know how else to get ready. Right? Yeah, because I've been know. watching some of these hunts, like an outdoor channel I watched. Lee and Tiff's a couple weeks ago, Levi's. And it's just like, even just watching people's footage of bulls in their faces bugling like that. I'm like, that is some, like, obviously it's pretty much the only thing you get that with is a turkey, but I wouldn't say at that decibel. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's an amazing experience. I, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for you, Taylor. That's going to be cool. Well, hey, Thank that's you. a perfect reason to have you guys on the podcast. Just to follow Let's up now. We can do a little Western podcast. Yep. Well, I think, you know, we're doing a show for Bow Madness that will feature Austin's 200 and hopefully Taylor's experiences while elk hunting if she kills one or not. Mm -hmm. That's what the show is going to be. Yeah. And and I want to make the show the show about relationships, whether it's your wife or spouse mm -hmm. hunts or don't doesn't hunt. How do you balance, you know, yeah. daily life? Because even with Taylor and Austin, like she's alone so often because of his guiding schedule, you yeah. know, so there's yeah. certain times of the year where hunting pulls them apart but at the same time it also keeps them very close so i, sure. I think it'll be that it would be a cool podcast as well just that to would be talk cool. about that you yeah know? i think so because it is challenging Hunt, hunting and relationships can be a big challenge it's tough. You know? i know a lot of buddies that their wives aren't supportive of it and it's not good it, no it, it, it makes it hard you it know? makes it tough i'm yeah. lucky my wife's a saint so <laughs> she really is like i I mean, I'm going to be a podcaster for a living for crying out loud. It's yeah. like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. And so are you, Mark. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I won yeah. the lottery back when I was 16. So yeah, that's even more rare. <laughs> it is. You know, yeah, we've been together forever. And so Tracy has had to endure more hunting talk and turkey calling contest and video yeah. talk yeah. than any woman should. I mean, then the law should allow Bless her heart. Bless her heart. Because she doesn't hunt. I mean, she's she goes, but she's like your wife. She'd rather observe than, yeah, than just girl. harvest an animal. Yeah. Hey, so. More tax for us. Where if we're at dinner talking deer talk, it's just a straight, no expression on her face. Like, I've heard it all. <laughs> Thousand yard stares. Well, Saturday night, Tracy and I went to dinner. And I texted some buddies and I'm like, hey, uh, they're going to meet us later. And she was like, I think I'll go home. <laughs> i'm good she goes and i go well come on i want you to go out with us let's go have a few beers you know yeah. and she was like no you guys are going to talk about deer which is what we did well, yeah know? of course she knew so she knew so we're predictable so to a point. she went home and facetimed her daughter yeah exactly she was a good mom yeah, yeah. bless her heart again <laughs> as i was a terrible dad and husband that night hey you got to do you sometimes you know yeah exactly <laughs> well taylor and also an invite i think you and austin should come out and co-host working class on DeerCast. that that's, would be so much fun yes you know i, I think mean, that'd be a good reason get you guys out here and show you guys the green room and absolutely and all that it might yeah. be a little harder for us like he even got he i don't know if he'll be at the farm at all this this year hopefully he will we have to coordinate if he is but yeah i'll definitely be there i mean a lot off and on throughout seasons so cool we'll yeah. figure it out yeah we'll figure it out it's not that far as we're we excited about that new series over on DeerCast. it's going to be awesome i'm really excited for he, it man. he's going to feature giant trackers every episode mm -hmm. he's going to have Dre outdoors team members as co-hosts yeah. i mean it's going to be awesome. it's going to be an incredible series and we're, we're so proud to have him a part of it i'm excited to, like for the co-host thing as i am just as much as the giant tracker segments because it's just it's yeah. fun to mix it up you know and then yeah. it, it might just be just us and some of the working class guys hosting it, you know, some episodes. So it'll be fun to just mix it up and keep it fresh. Absolutely. I love that. I yeah. love it. Dad, when did you and Kurt meet? We met through... We met through Chase. Through I'm fairly Chase. certain he introduced us at the Iowa okay. Deer Classic right. in, a, in a meeting ahead of the show back somewhere <laughs> in a room at the yeah. the event. Yeah, we call that the... Uh, what the hell do we, we call it? The dungeon. Yes. It's just a room that the guys of the Iowa Classic yeah. always... We started podcasting in that room the first time we... Uh, basically, the first time we went to a trade show. I just called Steve at the time, was like the show coordinator. And he's like, ah, there's like this 
concrete like prison cell type room you can <laughs> podcast in it if you want so we started we just would tape up like a working class bow hunter banner on the wall and rearrange the table and like put a table cover and that's where we started recording well then it was like hey let's have a meeting i'm like well i got the perfect dungeon meeting room where no one will bother us and that is actually i think the first time we met it is and then just uh we hit it off yeah i think just, we had beers then later of course that and show then, uh, yeah yeah. I'm fairly certain we did. Yep, we did. I'm shocked. Well, I mean, hey, <laughs> it was hunting camp, kind of. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, it was good. And then we just yeah. stayed in touch. And yeah, pretty much. It was, it was awesome. That's been three years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it has been yeah. three years. Gee, and we've done a lot of shows since then. Yeah. I was going to say that. You guys have done a lot of shows together. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a more frequent guest here than I am on 100% Wild Podcast with Tim and Matt. I know. They're going to get upset. You're not. I think they already upset. are upset about that. I heard uh, there was some fun joking around shade going towards your way, Mark. Weren't you on the podcast and they called you out? Yeah, they called me out on their podcast because I'm all over here so often. It's amazing. <laughs> they can't be mad at us. We're all in the same family. No, they're now. not mad. They're, it's it's good <laughs> oh, fun. Oh, I know they're not mad, but it's fun to poke at it's them. It's good fun. Yeah. I love it. I love that we all got to know each other. Because I think Austin and I originally met you at like maybe a at ATA or something, I think. No, I you know where it was? Um, Deer Fest. Oh, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. It was at Deer Fest. Yeah. Yeah. That at, was uh, a lot. Of, yeah, that was a five long years time ago. ago. Four or five yeah, years I, ago. I think it was prior to to you and Dad meeting, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's been it's awesome because it's like anytime we walk in a place and Dad's the same way now. We walk in a place and we see your whole crew at a table. That's the first place we go. We're yeah. like, up. Oh, there's the fun table. Here we come. <laughs> I still remember Taylor coming to me going, I met these guys at DeerCast and they want me to be on their show. You know, oh, and she oh, said oh, it's yeah. called the Working Class Bowhunter. And I was like, Yeah, sounds good. You should do that. You know, I remember you asking so, whether you should do that show or not. And I was like, Yeah, sure. It sounds great. So, I, was, I was young. You yeah, were I young. Because yeah, I remember I, we recorded that. And then after the episode was up, or I don't know if I sent you guys the episode before it launched, you were like, Oh yeah, my dad listened to it and like, you know, everything's good. And I was like, they probably hate us because we were just like, we've always been like fairly reckless within reason, you know, yeah. like a fun yeah. amount of reckless. But I feel like in our first year, we were just reckless, reckless because we just didn't really have a groove yet or didn't have yeah. an audience. Didn't have an, you know, that made a big difference. Like, no one was listening. Nobody's listening. We didn't have an audience. We didn't have any expectation. Yeah. Like we had no industry responsibility. Right. So Done. we were just like, wham, just, and Steve was involved. Sure. So it just was even, it was so reckless, but I mean, it, it worked out. We'll never be yeah. politicians if, they go back and try and get us, you know, the old like pulling up tweets from 10 years ago. <laughs> that, those, that was first yeah. year of podcasting. Would we'll be haunt like, you forever. Yeah. They'll end our, like if I ever run for office anywhere, they'll pull up those first like 50 episodes to be like, you said and this. Yeah. I'll be like, ah, all right. Yeah. I didn't want to do this anyway. Unless you go the Trump route, it may make you more popular. Hey, there's something to it, that. It didn't hurt him. Certainly. <laughs> didn't hurt him at all. At all. And it, we all miss him real bad right about now. So. Amen. Yeah. <sighs> Gotta love it. It's oh, funny the way wow, everything rolls in. It was good to see you, Taylor. Thanks for jumping on. You too. I'm glad you glad I was able to do this. And yeah, I, I definitely want to hop on uh after the elk hunt. We can yeah. hopefully have a good story. To I, hope. I, don't, what maybe I hope. Just co host one of the Deercast series podcasts with me. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would be way fun. We'll I'm do in. It. Sign me up. I'll put you on the list. Okay, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Dad, are, you, are you staying the night there and hanging with Kurt, or what are you doing? <laughs> well, depends if we have a drink after this or not. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I got, I got a pile to get ready for a season. I know that much. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. I know. The fact that it's literally two days away is kind of crazy. Like, it's, it's, here. it's nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. It is here. Yeah. It is here. It's crazy, and isn't Deercast, it? Deercast looks good. We Dad and I were looking at it on the phone the other day. Like, Deercast says, well, I think great on... The, it does. I think it's a great in the morning, good in the afternoon, but I'll take yeah. that as a great. <laughs> I love it. Cool. I love it. Well, awesome. Well, thanks, Taylor. Good luck. Best of luck to you. I'll say that on your hunt. Thank you. And we'll I'll, check in uh, with you. Try and keep people updated. If there are no updates coming through, I'm laying on the mountain dying. <laughs> yes. Well, take your time. You'll be all right. Or sobbing over a miss. Oh, oh, don't. don't. Here. Hold on. If you okay, knocked on wood. Mark, let's not talk about bow shots if you don't want to get into that, bud. Let's not talk about Deercast 
track last year that I added hits to the series. <laughs> oh, that, that was a uh, track user for every single animal. It was a bad sure. year for me last year. <laughs> hey, he, I think I talked about that in our the one we were doing about the mental games. I talked yeah, about you how horrible I was last yeah. year. Just I was losing it every time, and like this whole off season, I'm like get your head out of your butt and do better this year. Mm -hmm. Right. You yeah. know, like with every practice shot, everything like it's yeah. sometimes you, your mistakes is, is what drive you to get better. You know, and yeah. I'm, I am bound to determine to shoot better this year. Cause I'm a, I'm a better shot than what I showed last year. <laughs> sometimes it's this weird stuff happens, man. Oh or just, my goodness. I like, was just terrible. Like we year. said in that podcast, you know, slow the game down. It's like, yeah, sometimes your brain isn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I was shaking and nervous and yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'll do yeah, better. We're also shooting at some really big deer too. They were big. I will say that. Okay, that adds to it a that lot. Helps. You know, birds. I literally, I'm not kidding. I do not remember the last time I've shot a whitetail, and this is honest to God truth, where I did not in my head say "slow the game down." Like, yeah, I say it to myself before every single shot. Take that last breath and then shoot. But it, every single shot, I say that. It does help. I'd it's slow crazy, it down. Honestly. It's like you got to have that mental talk of like get your stuff together or else right. you know it's like you Tra don't want the feeling of missing or hitting yeah. a deer bad. I hear but, Tommy's voice say it. That's yeah. what I hear Jim say it. Who do you hear your own or mine or Jim's? I hear yours. You hear mine. Yeah. yeah, you almost need to like catch your brain up to like what's happening in the moment so you're like present. Because yeah. if you're not present, you can't really slow the game down cuz you're not you're not all there, I don't think. No. You know. It, when no. you hear my voice, am I whisper yelling or just talking? <laughs> are we in the moment or are we on the range? We're fighting. I'm mad at you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm whisper yelling. <laughs> I'll, show, it's a, I'll show you type of thing. <laughs> She's, Mark, Mark is king at whisper yelling, and it seriously takes my blood pressure and my heart rate <laughs> to hear every time. In reality, I'm emphatically instructing her. <laughs> I am not Can you give us yelling. an example of what whisper yelling is? Um, stop moving. Oh. oh, that was a nice whisper yell. <laughs> that was a nice one. <laughs> Is there bleeps involved? Oh, yeah, at times. There's been a few. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I get crazed. Like, if I have a new person in camp and I'm filming, I will apologize ahead of time right. for the things I'm about to say to you if <laughs> if a target deer shows up. Yeah. And that's no joke. I actually have that talk with them. Like, ignore yes. me. It will go away once the deer's gone. But in the moment, right. I say and do things that are crazed and, and irresponsible. Well, it's because you care. It, well, I just want it dead it so is. bad. I don't like, want yeah. them to fail, yeah. you know, and I get all jacked up, you know, yeah. and then I, I come across worse than it really is. I get what you're saying that's what she coins whisper yelling yeah okay i get it's, that yeah it's legit and Austin, especially it's like right here and you're like it's just more okay. aggravating because he's your dad <laughs> honestly <laughs> you know it's just your dad and your parents will aggravate you in different ways now austin's the one whisper yelling at her well that's the same thing it's like your husband yeah it's like shut up oh yeah i'm i'm everyone like all the guides up there like we can't wait to see how many times you guys argue and i was like oh she goes you might end up divorced after your elk hunt because when lee and i elk hunt together it's not good oh yeah i can only imagine i'm saying day one she's asking for a different guy <laughs> that'd be a smack in the face but hey you'll be fine be i think it'll be great he's yeah. gonna he's gonna do well where he yelled at me when he guided me from mule deer he That's, did. What a weird dynamic, huh? It was weird. He was in You're a bad like, mood, and I didn't realize he was in a bad mood. And we're going, and like, it was like this little <laughs> pasture that had a fence all the way around it. And I'm saying it's like a third of an acre, and we're trying to go there. And so that means we have to cross two fences. And I go, why don't we just go around like that to Austin? And he turns around and he goes, why do you have to question every single move I make? <laughs> and he turned around and crossed the fence real quick and took off what I was like, oh, shit. bro. And I didn't realize I was questioning his right, decisions, right. you know, and I was like, Which yeah. is, it's honestly so <laughs> funny because Austin is such an easygoing person. Yeah. But when it comes to hunting and I've seen it often, I just saw it last week, like he's been guiding for so long that it, and he get, he almost gets like jacked up even when he's just on a stalk or something mm -hmm. that anytime someone is going to question him and what he's Woo. doing, like he just snaps. <laughs> and it's funny because he really isn't like his personality is so chill. Yeah. Yeah. But he definitely, the snaps come out. The, well, he's going on no sleep. He's wearing himself thin. And yeah. when you're a guide, 
Like every week, it's a new, new person pressure. that you don't, well, a new pressure, new person. You don't know what their experience level is. Right. More often than not, it's it's not equivalent to what his is because sure. he yeah. does it every day, all day, you yeah. know? And, yeah. um, and those aren't easy hunts. Either. They're not they're easy hunts. It's I can't imagine doing that for a living. Yeah. And then when they kill one, he's got to pack it out. I mean, it, I mean, he's yeah. an animal in the fall. Like oh, the, yeah. the amount of elk they get out and quarter up and gut yeah. and oh, cape. Man. And it's it's unreal what he goes through on a daily basis. The pack out on my mule deer was tough. And we were taking a break. My buddy's like, dude, imagine if this was an elk. And I'm like, I would, I'd die. I'd be yeah. dead. Yeah. I'd be up getting picked I, apart by buzzards up on the mountain in Wyoming. That's I would. I wouldn't have made it out. Yeah. You you'd die with a quarter on your shoulder. <laughs> right. Trying to move. The buzzards would eat the quarter and then start and on you. Pick down through to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly yeah. exactly what would have happened, man. I'm like, they're gonna I was there oh, last brutal. week. Like I had never been a part of an elk kill at all. And um the client from Loophole ended up killing. And we got up to him and he's like, this is honestly one of the most ginormous elk I've ever seen. He guessed him to be like 900, 950 pounds when we got up to him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was two and a half hours just to quarter the bull. That's incredible. And I'm like, this is honestly insane. And in six days, they killed 19 bulls. Like Whoa. It, and then he, like, I mean, every week and he comes home, he gets about 24 hours off and he sleeps about 16 of the 24. Like he just is so exhausted, like mentally and physically. It's wow. crazy what they take their bodies through every week for about three months. <laughs> wow. That's it really incredible. is. Austin's an animal. Nineteen in six days. They did. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. But it's 243,000 acres. Right. Or four, right. Seven, whatever but still, I mean, just the a quarter of a million work. acres. Yeah. That's yeah, they work yeah. and the hours and the, and the miles they go. Yeah. It's unreal how much they walk. He said they average 12 to 15 miles a day, every day. He's when they're out cutting, man. Gee and whiz. That's not flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> not no, none flat. of it's flat. What's the elevation generally out there? Uh, I think average you're looking at like between seven and nine, depending on where you're that's at. That's insane. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. A lot of the elk are in that 8,000 range. Right. Yeah. Where we killed or where, when I was a part of that kill, I think he said we were at 8,300. Wow. And that's I can high. feel it. <laughs> I, was, I was up pretty high, but it wasn't for. It wasn't like hauling an elk out, you know. I, I we camped at ten four, and <laughs> I was it, I was having a hard time. Like, I would have passed out. Just set up the tent. I was like, <laughs> I could feel it, you know. And then I got like sick, kind not full blown elevation sickness, but or altitude sickness, whatever they call it. But I I was like early onset of that. I could feel it. So then I rested, yeah. and then we had to go up to the certain saddle was our goal to get up there, and I just took my time like sweet sweet time up there i let them guys follow me because they're used to it so i didn't get sick and then i killed my buck at close to 11. gee oh, my net net. yeah but 11 one was the highest we were at that's nuts and that's really high i was yeah. beat like it, it's I'll, i haven't even done the whole podcast on the entire story but i was crying when i killed my buck i was crying like <laughs> seriously i was crying that's awesome though yeah that it was bad awesome. and it was like emotional it was like my first deer hunt since my dad passed so the whole thing was just it for lack of a better term beat my ass it yeah. really did yeah. like beat me down but i'm glad it happened that way you know yeah because cool. then for it to come together it's like holy smokes i just did that yeah yeah it, at 11 one i mean that's that's pretty dang high i feel like it, high. a lot of people are gonna feel that altitude kind of like dizzy <laughs> fuzziness up there you know yeah well when we were packing my buck out my buddy Devin, who's from utah um actually he's like dude uh, this hill's steep for anybody he goes this is <laughs> steep for me because don't feel like you're going slow he goes i'm hurting so i was like, okay. like okay good it's not the bush lights <laughs> i was like yeah it's not the bush lights it's like but i could use one right now <laughs> that's how i felt you know <laughs> give me a line in kugels i'm having a hard time yeah no kidding <laughs> Oh, awesome. Actually, I'd be scared to drink a beer up that high. I don't know what a duty. Oh, easiest, quickest drunk you ever had. <laughs> right. I, I texted Dad. I think it was yesterday. I was like, I I do wish you were coming on my hunt. He replied, I would die. <laughs> yeah, it's no joke up there. You know, it's my buddy Clint does it all the time, and he's a he's Mister High Country Back Country Man. Now he's know? on the DL. It blew his knee out. He blew his knee out. Oh, really? Yeah, that's breaking news here. We don't know how bad it is, but. I mean, he went from Utah to Wyoming with me, back to Utah, and then I think was going to go to Colorado and hunt elk. And like back to back to back to back. And he's an animal. The whole time, he's just going, 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 doesn't slow down. 
and I got a call. He was supposed to come in the studio this Friday. And he called me. He's like, dude, I got to go to the doctor and get a bunch of shots in my knee. And he said it's oh, making man. noise when he bends his leg. Like, Mm-mm. I'm like, not good, man. Not good. Not good. So he's like, not I don't know if I'm be able to do this. To have that happen either. No, because he's like, I don't think I can do this elk hunt. I'm like, yeah, probably not. No. Because no. <laughs> what happens if you kill one? You then lose, you have to pack it out on your lose knee. your gears. You're done, mm-hmm. and you really are. So Dang. the older I get, the more carefully I walk through the woods I or on sidewalks, anything like yeah. I've seen it happen with my siblings. You know, little injuries lead to long-term problems. Yeah. And I was feeling it going down the mountain with my mule deer. It was seven miles out. And I, we're going down. It was killing me. And yeah. I, we were on a trail that was like switchback, you know. And my ankles were like so weak that I was falling. I fell probably three, four times going down and like just fell onto my shins and just <laughs> I was a mess, man. That just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> it's sec- it's fun now, you know. Yeah. It was not fun in the moment. But the whole time we're like it, yeah. secondhand fun, secondhand fun, secondhand fun, and yeah. that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's crazy, like how going down can almost sometimes be harder. Like when we were going down last week, just trying to go down on rocks. I mean, your feet are just like constantly slipping, and your ankles are just yeah. like, please find some flat to stand yeah. on for a second. And I learned like I don't really know how to walk being from the Midwest, like you don't actually know right. how to like walk properly because like I'm watching my buddies walk and they're going like, this sounds stupid, but it's just, I want to see a video. <laughs> like I'm going to do a tutorial video now that I like know a little better, but, but at this point my feet are destroyed. So they are walking basically down, downhill, steep downhill. They're like laying their heel down and then into their toe. And I'm like <laughs> an idiot or something or just didn't know or just I'm like towing down or trying to side hill side down yeah. and my feet were just one giant hot spot. So I have like my feet were taped up with uh, like Luco tape, athletic tape. Oh, so you had a bunch of blisters too on top of all this? I, I was trying to prevent them. I never got blisters. My wow, feet were, thank goodness. They were hot looking. Yeah, so that would be bad. I had all my feet and my toes taped up <laughs> with Luco tape. And then uh, what happened when oh, I shot? Thank you for not posting that. I, you know, <laughs> thank you for not okay. sharing that you, on you Instagram. Want, you want to know the only reason why I didn't? My daughter, before I went on my hunt, wanted to paint my toenails <laughs> and I let her paint my toenails. <laughs> well, thank your daughter. And I didn't want to seem like even more of a weirdo. Yeah. Right. So I didn't post them. But anyway, uh, yeah. But then when I shot my buck, I went down after him and I broke my big toenail on my left foot by go, like sliding oh. through rocks. Oh my so my God. feet are just destroyed. <laughs> It's just a mess. That sounds rough, dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I just made it harder on myself because I don't know how to walk, but they were like, they dude. They look over there like, there goes Kurt. <laughs> yeah. Sliding down the mountain. Yeah. They're like, dude, walk like this. Like, you're a mess. I'm like, I know. Look at me. Yeah. Think if you would have finished that and then would have got down and go, okay, now we got to go back and get the rest of it. You know, we got it all out. We almost left it and to go back and get it the next day because of the hailstorm we got right. into. And you were like, but mm-hmm. we got down once we got down off the mountain, like going back to the base base camp where our trucks were and stuff where I was like, you can pay me five grand to go back up there and come back down. I wouldn't do it. No. Like, it's just money. I don't need it. Yep. Even but if probably, you'd have left him, you would have had to. Have. I would have had to have. Yeah. But luckily we camped up there. Yeah. <sighs> it was bad. Jeez. Full story coming soon. Well, <laughs> now that we just pulled it out of you. <laughs> that's not that's not even all the story. It gets crazier. Awesome. I'm alive. What's up, guys? Hey, glad to be here, huh? Good stuff. So you're thriving. You won't have that much complications, I don't think, Taylor, on your old count, but best of luck. <laughs> I <you>. hope not. <laughs> yeah. If so. at all I have any of those experiences, I'm gonna be like, this is called the Kurt. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is what you're yeah. talking about. Yep. Exactly. Yep. It was bad. So, well, you've got Wade and, and Austin to help pull you through, so you'll be fine. Wade's going to go film it and produce it for Deer Season yeah. 21, and uh, Wade's her, or Austin is her guide, so it should be fun. Work out good. Well, anything yeah. we need to cover about DeerCast before we split? I know we covered a lot of the weather and like what you can find I think there. we covered it pretty pretty heavily. We didn't talk about DeerCast Track, yeah. which is behind that paywall we were talking about. Well, I think people can go to the when it launches the first working class on DeerCast series. We covered DeerCast Track pretty we extensively. Did. Yeah, you're right. We covered it really yeah. extensively there. Yeah. yeah. DeerCast Track is huge. I mean, it's like... It's my favorite. Get an animal, freaking go to DeerCast Track. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, finally, you have somebody in your head saying to wait or go or... It's Mark and Terry in your pocket at all times. Yeah, you know, you never know. You really don't. We and Tracker John and, and Tracker Bobby. Tracker. We had a deer last year that I killed in Missouri like 
we would have thought, oh, heart's heart shot. He's barely going to go anywhere. You know, it's just crazy how much like what what you're saying, dad, how it's you. You have a certain saying, but I can't think about it. I, I always say an inch can cost you a mile. And I'll yeah. also say nothing yeah. is probable. Everything's possible. Mm. I think that's probably the saying you're thinking of. Nothing's probable. Yeah. Anything is possible. Mm. And it happened with that one. Like, I mean, it looks like a smoke shot, mm -hmm. like 12 ring. And we got on that truck job right away because we were like, he should be down. And immediately I said, I'm not seeing the blood. This hit should be dumping out on the ground. Mm -hmm. And she goes, why do you have to be so negative? And I think I said, because well, I, I said, nothing's probable, anything's possible. Until yeah. we're holding him and he's dead, mm -hmm. There, you yeah. got to assume that they're fully alive. Mm -hmm. And we didn't go two more steps and that deer got out of his bed and took off running. And we were like, dang. So, yeah. yeah. So we waited three hours. And we're like, well, he's got to be dead now. Great blood all the way. Bump him again. Middle of the night. You know, it's mm -hmm. 10, 11 o'clock. And I was like, we're out. We got to wait till morning. And yeah. the blood was thinning then. We couldn't find blood. And mm -hmm. We ended up getting a tracking dog and finding him a mile later. He went a long, long way, a long way. And unfortunately, the, the coyotes had also beat us to him. But we did everything we could to find that deer. Yeah. Everything we could. And by the time we got to him, the coyotes had beat us to him. So it goes to the point that you just never know. Yeah, definitely. And, and it looks like a 100% 100% 12 ring. There were three of us in the blind. We were all in agreement. This right. is a dead deer. He wasn't. No kidding. But it's like. That's what deer cast track teaches you. I think so often or you hear these stories, kind of read the stories on social media, mm -hmm. people bumped a deer, then they never found, found them. Right. I, I would, I wish I knew, or we knew like how many deer have been recovered that would have been jumped if they didn't use deer cast track, like deer cast track. It's like you go to it and more often than not, you know, the four of them that are on there are telling you to wait. Right. You know, versus people always just climbing out of their stand, immediately going to blood, and then all of a sudden they never find their deer. You Definitely, know? So yeah. I think it's a huge, and it teaches you too. It's like every single hit, it's kind of like what I said about the weather. Like every single hit, you start mm -hmm. racking up that knowledge in your in your brain, and then all For of a sure. sudden, when you make that hit again, you kind of already know what's in front of you. Yeah, you know, definitely. I love it. It's my favorite feature because I just think it's genius, honestly. I mean, obviously, you know, the, you get to use like the weather algorithms, like the everyday feature. But um, I mean, I play with it, you know, play with that part of the deer cast track and learn. But yeah, when you need it, you need it. <laughs> even just staring at the even just staring at the anatomy of the buck teaches you a lot. Mm -hmm. You actually kind of know what you're aiming at and why you're aiming certain places versus not. Yeah. Just and seeing how they're laid out. You know? And it helps you too with going into like the slow the moment, be present in that moment. Like the bat, like then you can kind of like pick your shot and then watch your shot. Cause if you're in the moment, you're slowing the game down, that'll help. And then you go to that, then it's kind of like the most foolproof game plan you could probably get, you know? Yeah. When it comes yep. to that moment and, and the actual killing of the animal, the shooting of the whitetail, that's, I mean, really, you use all the tools you can to your advantage and confidence is a big thing. It really is. It mm -hmm. makes a big difference. The biggest thing, really. The biggest. So, mm -hmm. Well, cool. Well, I appreciate you saying all that, and I appreciate you having us on, buddy. I appreciate you coming in. It was and, good. And it's cool having Taylor jump on halfway through. That's pretty awesome. Heck, yeah. Thanks for having me. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll get back at it and do some co-hosting and some fun stuff. Yeah, looking forward to that. So awesome. that's the big announcement on this episode is the working class on DeerCast. is going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. It's going to be a blast. Cool. That's epic. I love it. All right. Well, I'm closing her out there. You know what to do, everybody. Go shoot your bow. We love you. Thank you.